a one, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Hey, 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 welcome back, Jack. How you been? It's Yin. Welcome back to another episode of the Zoe Podcast where we talk about all sorts of stuff, including family, fantasy, and freedom. And today, we got a fun one today. We got a big, fun adventure today. We're going to talk about something very uh, near and dear to my heart, and it's going to be, if you can tell by the thumbnail, it's going to be pretty problematic, dramatic, all that stuff. But before we begin, before we begin, okay, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to the people who already donated. Uh, If you would like to donate and support the show, God bless you. You can also subscribe, like, and comment, and share. Really appreciate that as well. Um, Every little bit counts to making this show better and better and better. More content like this will come down the pipe uh, with every donation. You'll be able to get more and more and even better. Thank you. All right, so let's begin. Here we go. So YT is at it again. And let me just tell you something. When this happened, I was originally in the beginning, before it even happened, I was very excited. But before we talk about the excitement, I deep down kind of knew inevitably I would be disappointed. It's 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 YT. Looking back, I should have known I would be disappointed. <laughs> I should have known. But when you are someone like me who is about having hope, I was still trying to push through and have hope. So in the beginning, I was very excited when I heard that Lord of the Rings were going to be in Magic cards. I'm a big, big fan of both. You know, I love Magic, you know, the Magic the Gathering. I've always, as a kid, loved the card game. And I was collecting ever since I was a kid. And I played ever since I was a kid. I kind of had a little bit of a gap in time. But, that you know, that's that's life. Life hits you and you have things to do. So you put away a hobby for a little bit. You come back. That's life. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Always been near and dear to my heart. Big fan. Uh, You know, met a lot of wonderful people in my life through Lord of the Rings and had a very good, healthy upbringing reading those books, okay? So when this happened, I was shocked. (laughs) Okay, I'm not going to lie. I was shocked when I saw this. I said, are you serious? Are you kidding me? What's... (laughs) You got to be kidding me. What an insult to everyone who likes this franchise. Black people, white people, doesn't matter. I know Egyptian people who saw this and went, yo, bro, what the heck happened? <laughs> Why are you doing this to us? It's, it's, I thought it was an early April Fool's joke at the moment. I was like, eh, maybe they're joking. And then I realized, wait, it's wa- it's Wazards. <laughs> they went full Wazards, full-blown Wazards. I'm sorry. That's who they are. That's what they did. And I, sh- I now looking back, I should have known. I should have known. But it's okay. We're we're moving forward. But this part made me laugh. I said, "You guys really, you really did it. You don't care." I'm kind of shocked about the. Um, there has to be something in the law that in the in the in the contract that says they can do that. That they can take whatever. Uh, you know, otherwise they'd be in trouble, right? But who knows? Anyways, they decide- decided. Let me take the prince of 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 Zamunda, Eddie Murphy, aka. Prince Akim, and let me go ahead and put him as the face, boom, the face of the king of Wa- of Condor. I almost spilled the beans about something in a minute. I almost said it, but I didn't say, I didn't say it. Woo, close. We're, we're waiting on that. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, so they decided, let me go ahead and make him the king of Gondor, uh, Prince Elazar, a.k.a. Uh, you know, uh, Strider, a.k.a. Aragorn. Um, and they, and uh, honestly... You know me, you may be asking yourself, that's a little too much. Come on, Yin. That's a little much. I mean, look at his face. That does not look like Eddie Murphy. And and I would say, okay, I get you, and I understand the criticism. I understand the, the, the skepticism. That's fine. That's cool. I can kind of see how you can see it not being him. But what if I were to tell you they pulled a JoJo's Part 8, and they took one guy and another guy, and they put them together, and you got this guy right here, okay? This type of Aragorn. That's the result of these two of of this Aragorn. What if I told you that? Well, here we go. You got yourself not just not just Eddie Murphy, not just Prince Akim, but also now you have <laughs> you have now also <laughs> Prince of Wakanda, King of Wakanda, you know King T'Challa, aka Chadwick Boseman, and they put him together in there. They put King and King. They put him together. You got yourself a double king. <laughs> 
double king. I mean, come on, man. You can't tell me. You can't tell me these two guys are not this guy. I mean, look at that face. Look, just look. I even put in that picture right there. It's the same guy. It's the same guy. They're two guys in one, okay? JoJo's part eight, you know. <laughs> Full blown, no creativity whatsoever, you know? It'd be one thing if you said, hey, this is a new character in a new world that we made up. That'd be different, which we'll talk about in a minute. We'll talk about that at the end there, you know? There is some hope there. So why is this weird? Let's talk about why this is weird. Well, it's weird because Tolkien was a linguist and he was a European mythology expert, okay? He was a professor, all right? This is an insult to his expertise. You don't go out there and take something that he created and twist it into your own personal, you know, uh, you know project. You know, you got to follow the thing that he made per, per, per word or what's the point? This is also weird because they, they are acting like no one would notice this. Hello? It's weird because Tolkien fans are notorious for obsessing over details and accuracy to the source material. They are notorious for being the guys who notice things. They notice if something's off. They notice if something's not right. Why, why would you even tempt that? Why, why would you even tempt that? The only reason I can think of for you to do that is if you want division. It's weird because you're inevitably trying to cause drama and division by doing this. Now, if it's intentional or not, it doesn't matter. That's what you're doing. You're causing drama, strife, infighting, all sorts of hate between people. And and it's not even like hate like, you know, I hate you because of identity. No, it's a disgust because you're both having people provoke each other into more conflict. That's what I mean by hate. It's people who are you know, hurling things at each other now because they both are like, oh, I don't I like this. Another person calls somebody a name, which obviously we know who they are, which we'll show you an example right here. You have people calling, uh, you know, the fans, insulting the fans, calling them racist or homophobic or whatever phobic you want to put it. They, they're calling, I mean, now it's, it, there's a meme about it now. People are calling it istophobes. That's what they're calling it now. They don't even, you've devalued the word, racist, homophobic, whatever. You've devalued it by throwing out these baseless insults with nothing for it, just nothing, just as a as a reactionary take because you didn't like somebody not liking the thing that they put out there, which, to be honest, most people don't like this stuff. You know, this is about grifting. This is about gaslighting. It's disgusting, and it needs to stop. You know, if you want to create a positive community, you have to be the change that you want to see. You know, I'm looking at this, and I'm criticizing it from a place of, you know, respect of the source material. And that's why I'm talking about this today. It's a big, big problem in, you know, in fantasy in general. And so this change is very impactful to the, it's the most impactful to the entire lore of Lord, which was so weird to me that you would go with, you know, Aragorn than anybody else. You know, ironically, I made the joke earlier to somebody. I said, uh, a black Gandalf would make more sense. Because Gandalf is not even, you know, uh, you know, he's not even a normal person, right? He's 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 in he's a more mysterious person, right? He's a more alien person, if you know what I mean. If that makes sense to you, uh, if you read the lore, you'll know what I'm talking about. For those of you who read the books, he's more he's more more out there, more of out of this world, if that makes sense. Um, just based on his own heritage, right? Uh, anything could happen. He died. He came back. He's Gandalf the White now, right? I could easily have seen him die and come back and be Gandalf the Black. <laughs> That's a joke. That would be a hilarious joke. But but no, going back to the going back to being serious though for a second though, it makes so little sense to do this with Aragorn because his heritage is tied to his entire story. It's tied to his entire story. Everything that happens to Aragorn and around Aragorn and the choices he makes has everything to do with his past. And his race, his heritage, his his family history, all of it ties together. Um, I just wanted to give you a visual of how complex Lord of the Rings is and how weird it is that you would even do that change and how that would affect everything. It would change everything. And so what are some examples, some some moments of revolving around uh, Aragorn's heritage, you know, uh, claim to Gondor's throne, sword being reforged, his ability to pass through elf lands with no harm, no problems. Uh, the dwarven and elf allegiances he made, 
and calling on the undead oath breakers all of this would have been changed if it was just if he was a different heritage a different race a different whatever um it just wouldn't match it just wouldn't it would change <laughs> it, pro it probably would have a different outcome to be honest with you probably a different outcome there may not be some resources he has or maybe uh the outcome for some of the choices he make would have turned out differently right so Here's a solution, though, okay? Here's a solution for, for Wazards, <laughs> for Wazards, for Watsi, okay? If you want to do, if you want to do a Black King, it is possible. Make a unique world, okay? Make a unique fantasy plane that has a Black King with a great story. That's the important part. It's not just it's a Black King. Make a good story, People want a good story. They want to be immersed in your world. They want to feel like they've escaped into your world. They want to feel like you have, uh, you know, entered a different place that isn't our normal place where they can just imagine an amazing adventure, right, in their head. Because a lot of this is in your head. You're reading a story. You're getting immersed. Those of us, in, you know, who, who are in fantasy, you read a lot of fantasy. It's just this is normal for us. We imagine a unique place. We're, we're in there with them. We're watching this thing happen like a movie, right? And so you have to, again, respect the readers. You respect the audience by creating something new as opposed to usurping something that they're familiar with, that they grew up with, that is a part of their childhood. Create new memories. Don't have a scarcity mindset about what you can do. Have an abundance mindset. This is always about abundance versus scarcity. If you don't respect yourself to actually have an abundance mindset, how can you expect other people to respect you? How can you other expect the readers to respect you, to, for fans to respect you and your work? Come on. So here's an example of Wizards doing it right in the past because they've done it right in the past, and I don't know why they're not doing it again, but we, we have theories, but let's go into this. One of the greatest magic settings that exists is Mirage. Now, Mirage, I have fond memories of Mirage because I grew up with Mirage, all right? Mirage was one of the best settings, and it created wonderful characters that are still with us today, that are still relevant today, like Teferi ok Akosa, who is a planeswalker. He was mainly blue. Uh, I think they may have changed. There may be a card where he has, like, white. I, I don't remember per se exactly. But he saved his land from war by phasing his country, his kingdom, out of time. It was just a weird thing I've never heard of before. It was like, wow, you could actually do that? You, that's a thing? Um, eventually, they decided, you know what? Too powerful. We're gonna, he's going to lose his power. We're going to depower him, which is okay. You know, it creates a new dilemma, a new adventure, a new story you can have. Um, and you know what he did? The most base thing I could ever think of is when it comes to a character retiring, he decided to start a family. And he started a family, a whole lineage, you know? So that is very powerful and very, you know, positive and uplifting. It's like, oh, wow, you, this black hero decided to start a family. What a, <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a wholesome ending, you know what I mean? Now, obviously, there's more storylines that come after that. But that was basically the end of his, like, major storyline, right? That was the ending. He had a good beginning. It had a great middle. It had a great ending. And that's how you tell a good story. That's just how you do it. Here's another example of why Mirage was great. The world of Jamura. The world of Jamura was a very interesting and diverse place. Different settings, different backgrounds. You want to talk about diversity? Let's talk about diversity of the areas. There was so many cool things about Jamura. It, it was a mystical place where anything could basically happen and anything did happen. Um, uh, there was a lot of lore in it, which we'll talk about in a second. There's a lot of art in this story, by the way. I just wanted to point, I almost forgot to mention that. The art in this adventure really uh, captivated me as a young man. Uh, the cards, I almost, I'll be honest with you, I almost went broke several times buying all the cards I could get from uh, Mirage. Because uh, <laughs> when it happened, when it came out, you really were just gambling on every booster pack you can get. And I was very happy no matter what because of the the art was so good and the story was so good. And I wanted to just get them all, honestly. I've never been more addicted to magic uh, uh, except for when I had, you know, the, when the Mirage set came out. I was so addicted to magic. I would buy, they pretty much had my money, every, all my money, all my money. <laughs> Full disclosure. I was pretty much like, all right, if I have to buy one more booster pack, 
my dad's gonna kill me. <laughs> my dad is gonna be like, yo, you addicted, you gotta stop. Um, but yeah, that's how good it was. That was just an example of how good, you know, Wizards was as a marketer, as a, you know, creator, a creative developer team. They had everything going for them. You know, very colorful places, very colorful characters and backgrounds and storylines and the lore. Let's get into the lore. But I guess we're going to go into the flavor. I forgot I moved that slide. Let's go into the flavor. The flavor was so good. Look at these cards that we have right here. I'm going to look at one of these quotes. You have a guy who's just basically a spectral guardian. And basically the whole point of him is he's a treasure. He's a guard who tre who, who, who protects treasure. Like D&D. &D, like, you know, traps in D&D. When you go in, you're thinking you're going to be okay, but then you get invaded by some, <laughs> you get invaded by some ghost like it's Dark Souls or something. Um, there's a lot of sad stories that happen on the wayside in in Jamura, like this like this card right here called Unfulfilled Desires, and then you have fun little stuff, which was such a great refreshing thing to have in Magic, because most of Magic in the beginning was more serious, you know, pretty serious, but then you have stuff like in Kundu Cyclops, which. <laughs> I mean, look at that art. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of The Tick. I don't know if you guys are familiar with The Tick, but go look up The Tick. It's got that same style of flavor. Um, man, it was so much in Mirage. And honestly, if they could make another like type of storyline with a new world like that, you would be, you'd be, you'd be, you'd be making gangbusters money. Um, now let's get into the lore. The lore of uh, of of Jamura and Mirage was so diverse and so I mean it some of the stories in Mirage really captivated me because at the end of the day this was a world of characters of unique places and peoples that are not just defined by their race they're all varying just because somebody was black in Jamura it didn't mean anything it was just a a, a, a character caricature of you you know it was like a a just a simple little um you know race really truly didn't matter it was just a part of you know, a part of your life. It wasn't a part of, it wasn't you, you know, it was just a part, a very small part of your life. And that to me was inspiring. You could actually be a person. You're not just like, you know, a, you know, a black person in that world, right? You, it is just a person. And that's like the essential goal, honestly, of immersion to me is, is this world a world of people where they're just people? Even if there is like a racial tension thing, is it one to one to real life or is it something unique and different and you know kind of interesting keep it interesting whatever you're going to do make it interesting make it exciting make it something that people are going to be engaged with right that's the whole point in my opinion of what a fantasy world is keep people immersed make it unique and interesting have a fun adventure that's it that's all you need so simple three you know three flavors three things you need three pillars to a great fantasy world adventure right and so in conclusion in my opinion you can do it you can have like a black king you just have to make your own thing you don't need to usurp something like lord of the rings to validate yourself have some self-validation in your own creativity i'm a writer i'm creating my own world i'm creating my own stuff i'm making my own thing i walked away from star wars for example and i'm making my own stuff i'm making my own fantasy world you know, and I would hope you know, people would be interested to check it out when it comes out, when my books come out. I'm very excited. But again, this is all about the psychology of your own uh, belief system, your own like mentality of what you're creating. If you don't have validation of your own self, then yeah, of course you're gonna be creating, uh, 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 you know, ripoffs of other things and, and, and usurping other things and putting your, you know, uh, 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 slapping a face on it when you should just be actually creating something new. Anyways. That's my take for now. What do you guys think? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. Appreciate your time. God bless you. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless you.